What's happening guys, Salam Mike, back again, back to my roots, fast, loose, rapid fire Q&A. Follow me, Salam Mike, with 2Ks on Instagram if you wanna get involved with the questions. If you wanna get involved with some live streaming, I am on Twitch, link in the description. We're doing it a couple of times a week when I'm in town. Come chat, hang out, we're building a dope community there. And if you've been living under a rock, Mama's Boys Podcast, me and Omar Isaf, iTunes, Stitcher, soon to be Spotify, SoundCloud, mamasboyspodcast.com. Check it out right now. Here we go. Let's hop into the questions. Fam, how does one modify or, uh, your program to compensate for sleep deprivation, stress uh, from work and school? I think that um, you know, auto-regulation and RPE and all these buzzwords do get thrown around, but maybe the roots of why you're using them or how to use them does get lost. Everyone kind of knows what RPE is now and people often use it. Uh, correctly or incorrectly. RPE is basically rate of perceived exertion. And that's what uh, Mike Tashir and a lot of other uh, very, very smart, wise, experienced coaches are starting to use more commonly in their programming uh, for their athletes. Because like you stated there, depending on how you eat, stress, sleep, life, all these things um, play a role in how you'll perform in the gym that 70% in the gym doesn't always feel or move the same, uh, depending on fatigue from training and fatigue from life, uh, namely those factors that I just uh, went over. So how do you um, adjust to that? Well, hopefully one, you know, the best is obviously to have a coach where they can monitor you daily. Uh, two, having some kind of auto-regulation in your program, and many programs go about this different ways. As I mentioned, one, an RPE program goes about that because RPE eight, uh, is how you feel that day that set. And that will always be the judge of the load on the bar, which takes into account how you feel that day, which already obviously covers these excess other factors. Uh, two would be if you're using percent, um, just auto-regulate yourself. Uh, so if you're supposed to hit 315 on the bench for three by three and 275 moved really, really slow, maybe just use 305 that day. As long as you hit a range or you're kind of in the ballpark of these numbers during your program, you can still progress. Rather than 275 being so slow, trying 315 for three by three and missing it or just giving up and going home like, oh, I'm weak today. Just hit 300 or 305 or 310 for the three by three and you'll be absolutely okay as you progress through the time. So that's another way to auto-regulate. Often when I uh, write for people or program, I'll do one of two things. I am a percentage guy. I prefer a percentage because that's just how my mind works and that's how I'm connected to programming and lifting weights. So what I do is a uh, majority of our stuff is so sub-maximal that even on your worst day, Although the weights might feel a little heavier or move a little bit slower, you'll still be able to complete the reps that I program. Um, for example, you know, the best five by five or the most optimal five by five is typically 80%. Uh, and obviously this varies in a hundred different ways, but that's kind of what the standard is. So I would never prescribe an 80% five by five unless I know the person's one rep max has risen because that's if everything is optimal. That's the standard five by five. So if we do a five by five, excuse me, LaCrue, getting bubbly, I'll just step it back and we'll do 70% or 72.5% or 75%, 77% so that I know even on your worst day, if you didn't sleep, you didn't eat, you'll still be able to complete those. Um, another way that I do it when I program or talk to a client, uh, hopefully I have an educated client or I'm teaching that client along the way to learn how to auto-regulate themselves so they can just take that step back as my second um, example there. But if not, then what we could do is we give ranges. So, hey, Tuesday we're gonna bench three sets of 10 at 55 to 60%. And then that's on you to kind of choose as you're warming up what you can do. Maybe even your first set, since you have three sets of 10, is 55%. And if you smoke it, then you add a, you know five pounds. Smoke it, then you add another two and a half percent. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Hopefully that answers it. That was a little long-winded, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help guys. How do you deal with your anxiety or those I don't want to do it moments? Uh, good question, man. Uh, I do deal with some anxiety. Uh, and I think every human I think anxiety and I don't want to do it moments are different for a majority of people. They're different animals. Um, I think many people do suffer with some type of anxiety. Uh, and I think everybody deals with I don't want to do it moments. And I think that's something that, you know, the good and the bad of the social media, this is a long uh, winded answer again, but uh, everybody deals with I don't want to do it moments. I don't believe in myself moments. I don't uh, want to get out of bed moments or days. Um, that's everybody. And if, and if they say they don't, they're fucking lying to you. Uh, and so fuck those liars. Uh, Everybody deals with that. And I think my main answer to I don't want to do it moments is to build routine, to build superstition, and to build good habits or build habits at all. So that's why we start small and just slowly do things step by step. 
Um, if I'm dealing with a brand new person that wants to get fit, I'm not giving them a full program of six days a week, full nutrition, you know, every single day, every single macro, cardio five days a week, a sleep schedule, all of these things, because then that's 10 new habits they have to build rather than, hey, let's see if we can get into the gym a couple times a week. Hey, let's see if we can drink a little bit more water. Hey, let's see if we can cut out some of these types of foods. Hey, let's see if we can go to bed before 11 and we'll slowly layer in these habits because once you have a habit built, uh, although it's not always awesome, like not every day do I wake up just stoked to go to the gym, excited, counting how many reps I get to do on the bench press. Some days I don't want to go to the gym. Even today, I just got back from the gym. I wasn't that excited. I got some of my work done uh, and I came back home. I go to the gym because it's a habit, because I've done it for so long, because it's part of who I am, and I know that it's gonna lead me to where I want to go. It's leading towards the goals that I have, so. And that kind of goes with everything. Getting your hair cut, getting your work done, working on side projects, hobbies, working on family, working on business, working on side hustle, whatever it might be, you just slowly build those habits so that, slowly build the routine so that the habit forms and the times that you're not as motivated or not as inspired to go do those things, your body kind of turns on a cruise control and you just get them done. Or sometimes you just have to sit down, have an inside moment, say, hey bitch, it's time to work. Uh, I've had those as well, even with the habits I've built. Like, there's times I don't want to travel to do the work that I have to do or get to where I want to go, but I know ultimately where I want to go that this travel has to happen, that this content has to be made, these business meetings have to happen, and so I just do them. And sometimes that's literally meditation or whatever you want to talk about. I'm sitting on the couch by myself like, hey, Mike, you idiot. We're going to sit here and do nothing and end up not where we want to be, or we're going to get this done and we're going to end up where we want to be. Step after step, rep after rep, head down, chin up, talk to him, talk to your boy. Am I going to do more cooking videos? For those subscribers that are the OGs, we did some cooking videos back in the day. I might do some. I'm in the process of moving, um, which hopefully we're going to start to vlog and talk about a little bit more. I don't like to talk about things prematurely because then if they don't go down or don't go down when I say or how I want then I feel like an idiot telling you, or even in my personal life, I don't like to tell people like, hey, I'm doing this cool thing, and then this cool thing doesn't happen, and then I'm an idiot. So, but I am in the process of moving, so I'm trying to find the perfect spot for me to live, uh, and also for content. So, I'm hopefully gonna get a cool kitchen where we can do some more cooking stuff, more vlogs, more lifting, more sit down chats like this, more Twitch, more all that. Um, so I say yes to the cooking, it'll just be a matter of time. Nathan asks, can I bench three plates only weighing 168 pounds, or do you need to gain some weight? Uh, impossible to say. Uh, this is where genetics plays a role. Plenty of 170 pound guys have bench 315. Not every 170 pound human being on earth has the capability to bench 315. That's just a fact. Um, how our tendons are built, how they're structured, how our muscles are built, how they fire, how our neural uh, 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 pathways are, are fire, uh, connected to our muscles. Uh, all this is genetically different. How we can fire these things at the same time is different. So not everybody can do it. So I can't answer for you. I'd say potentially yes. If you're making progress and you're close to there, uh, you might be able to do it. Um, if not, gaining a little bit of body weight, I bet you could do it uh, in the long run. So sorry that answer sucked. Do you plan on coming to the UK anytime? I would love to go to the UK. We got a bunch of UK homies here on Instagram and on Twitch and stuff that have been chatting with me. I just need a really good excuse to go. Um, it's a long, long trip from California. IA. Uh, I'd love to, but I need some homies that want to roll with me. You know, Barquan and some of those guys want to roll. I'd be definitely down. Um, I will make it to the UK, I promise, and we'll do a meetup and we'll do some cool shit, uh, but I don't have a date set. Favorite thing to do besides getting swole? Uh, I like playing sports. I like watching sports. Uh, basketball's first love growing up. Um, I like driving. Uh, I love driving my car around. You guys can check back on the car vlog that I put up a couple weeks ago. Uh, I love just playing, dicking around. On the way back from Barber Brigade a couple weeks ago, we just played Capture the Flag. We just stopped at a soccer field. That was super fun. I love shit like that. Just like playing catch, like being a kid, grabbing a football and just playing catch in the backyard. I don't do that stuff enough because I have no friends. Uh, but I do like doing that stuff. Uh, like playing golf is something I haven't done in a long time. But growing up, I played a lot of golf. I suck, but I love it. Um, playing music is another thing I love to do, which, again, I haven't done, but I did my entire childhood. Uh, drums, guitar, uh, some electronic shit. Uh, I like playing video games. That's why we started Twitch. I played video games my whole life. And then now for, uh, to have give me an excuse, another reason to connect with you guys and have a cool little community and communication while I'm playing video games, I'm fucking down with it. Uh, I like podcasting. Uh, that is a little bit of work for me, but it's something I love. Um, and I love chilling. I love absolutely nothing. I like watching movies and kicking it. <sighs> Would you rather get a bikini wax or wear makeup for a day? 100%. 
wear makeup for a day. I don't want to wax nothing, especially down there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Come on. Because you are the peach king, is it hard for you to buy jeans? Yeah, it is. I mean, bleep, yeah, it is. YouTube's cut down on F-bombs. I just want to drop an F-bomb here and there. YouTube's not that big of a deal. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to buy jeans. Uh, that's why we just wear joggers. Uh, whether they're, some of them are, are kind of material, um, you know, khaki or something, but majority of them are sweats because they fit me better, they're more comfy. Um, it's roughly the peach king nowadays, bro. Especially when skinny jeans are in style. One day, soon, baggy jeans will come back in style and I'll be able to rock them. Appreciate you. I'll see you on Twitch. I'll see you in the next video. We're dropping videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Subscribe, turn on notifications. I appreciate you. Silent Mike, head down, shin up. Me, do me, we out of here.